I would like to invite you on a journey through my life to show you how I changed my perspective on development aid. My name is Katharina Jung. I'm a political activist, political scientist, social entrepreneur, and founder of Global Match. I was born in a small Bavarian village and always wanted to become either a princess or a celebrity. When I was 14 years old, my family took me on a holiday to South Africa. One brief encounter there was life-changing. I talked to a South African girl who was just as old as I was. We even liked the same pop star, Hannah Montana. And both of us had dreams of becoming famous one day. The only difference was, while I was traveling with my family, she was selling crafts on a dusty highway. So this moment was very important to me because I had a first glance of how it feels to leave my own selfish adolescent perspective of putting my own problems into the center of my reality. I realized that the place of birth determines the opportunities a person has. This made me redefine my own identity. Instead of striving for glamour, so no more Hannah Montana, I wanted to contribute. I wanted to contribute to a better world. This meant concretely, I wanted to become a development aid worker for Africa. Now, what about your dreams? I'm sure all of you have visions about what you want to achieve in your life. Flying to Mars, mitigating climate change, discovering a medication against cancer, well, simply contributing to a better world, right? But have you ever worked together or studied with someone from Guatemala, Myanmar, or Uganda in order to achieve your own vision? I would like you to think of a person from a developing country. What images about this person do you have in mind? I had and sometimes still have stereotype pictures about people from those countries. Colonial thought patterns frame our understanding of the world as a developed versus a non-developed world. But wouldn't it be nice to experience that people from those countries have the same visions and passions as we have? And furthermore, even reaching innovative solutions if we learn from other cultures? My wish is that the place of birth should not determine the opportunities a person has. And my belief is that we have to and can work together to realize the full potential of globalization. So come follow me on that journey. Follow me through an iron gate the entrance of St. Moses Children Care Center, Tunja, Uganda. You hear the voices of loving children. Some are playing football, others just returned from school. You smell the food that is just being cooked. Boiled bananas and tina sauce, I like that. Everything seems quite normal, except a white girl that is sitting at the lane and trying to convince some children to paint their favorite animal. So that girl was me when I was 17 years old and just decided to pursue my wish to help Africa. But the one can become the other with a glimpse of an eye. I went to Uganda with the intention to contribute somehow with my ideas and my creativity. But I quickly realized that my presence there could not create any impact. I felt useless. I wanted to give, but instead I took. At the end, this voluntary service was more about my own personal development and still trying to find my identity. But I would like to introduce you to a special person I met in Uganda. This is Odongo and me. Odongo grew up at the orphanage I was volunteering at and attended high school.
school during my time in Uganda in 2011. There and also afterwards, we had many discussions about politics, ethics, and also how to decorate our student flat. So this let us become friends. Two years after, as my academic interest got more focused on peace and conflicts, Odongo invited me to come again to Uganda. This time, he helped me to conduct a couple of interviews with former child soldiers in northern Uganda. We experienced a cooperation at eye level. Both of us loved the way we worked together in finding out more about the Kony conflict. And we had deep discussions about our basic values. One day, Odongo pointed at the street we were walking on. The street was in horrible conditions, potholes every, every two meters filled with water. You know, the typical image of a developing country. He asked me, Kati, do you know why this street is not repaired yet? I answered, maybe there's no money for it? He responded, our government has money, but people wait for Europeans to repair our streets. Our people don't believe in themselves. They think that they depend on help from outside. Odongo taught me that there's a strong disconnect between the political elite and the Ugandan government. This made me question the idea of development aid for the first time. And it made me feel confused. Does our approach of development aid make the situation even worse? When I left Uganda, I felt sad. Why could I? easily travel to Uganda to conduct the scientific research there? And why can't Odongo do so as well? Why are there almost no scholarships? Or does any one of you know an exchange student from Uganda, Kenya, or Zimbabwe at your university? Why are borders real for some and not for others? How can we achieve equal opportunities? What institutions are responsible for that? Eager to learn more, I participated in a conference of the United Nations. So follow me to New York, Times Square's Sheraton Hotel, a world of glamour and power. 5,000 students from all over the world came together to discuss on how to end poverty. Over the world? Well, no. There was no single delegation from an African country. This should be a place where we discuss our future together. Odongo should have been there as well. And indeed, it is confirmed the place of birth determines the opportunities a person has. Can we achieve equal opportunities? Could it be through development aid? Eager to learn more? Well, I studied. I studied political science and in through my studies in Germany, Spain, and Brazil, I learned about post-colonial theories. These concepts explain the dissatisfaction we felt during the last minutes quite well. Let's take a moment to think about what the term development means. To develop something means to lift it from an immature level to a better form of itself. But who determines what is better? The idea of development implies a difference between ethnic groups. I'm sure you all know Pocahontas, the Native American princess, and you know I tend to like princes. So her tribe was invited by British settlers. In the beginning of globalization, European colonizers defined themselves as the top of God's creation. The native population was constructed as the opposite, deeply connected to nature, uncivilized and wild. This difference legitimized the Europeans in taking over other civilizations, taking their land, their women, and even selling them as slaves. In the second part of the Disney movie, Pocahontas was carried to England. The movie illustrates quite well how she had to give up her own attitudes and values in order to be accepted into British society. During colonization, the understanding of the world was formed, and the identity 
of both colonizers and colonized. So coloni colonies were disconnected from their own historical timeline and integrated into the Western economic and value system. Today, former colonies have formal independence, but they still depend on post-colonial world order. So resources are still extracted in the global south, but the value chain ends in the global north. The development aid, or the idea of development aid, comes from the time of decolonization and is often criticized as just a reproduction of Western interests. So the Research Institute Global Financial Integrity estimates that for every dollar of aid a country receives, it loses $24 in net outflows. Isn't that crazy? When Western aid organizations communicate with the picture of starving black children, which would be futile as without of the help of the white donor, they reproduce dependency. The idea of development implies a linearity. So there's developing, emerging, and industrialized. The places I showed you represent that as well. So New York, Times Square, versus the orphanage in Uganda. And the developing world is often stigmatized as rural, traditional, people there are lazy, whereas the developed world is modern, urban, and people there are rational. So, the, the development critical author, Arturo Escobar, put that dilemma quite well into words. Development aid is not only a problem to the extent that it failed, it is even a problem when it succeeded because it so strongly set the terms of how people in poor countries could live. Wow. It is also, it, it is also a problem when it succeeded. Do you feel my frustration? Is my wish to help nonsense? Are voluntary services selfish? Is the $143 billion of official development aid the world community contributes every year worthless? When I took a deep dive into the world of development aid during my internship at the ministry, the, foreign, the Federal Ministry of Development and Economic Cooperation, I met wonderful people fighting for huge goals. But still, is development aid just a drop in a bucket? Is it, at the end, just the reproduction of Western interest? Is it a dead end? Odongo and I understand our world order as a semi-permeable membrane. You remember that from biology class, right? A membrane that allows some particles to enter, but restrains others. So our world order allows resources to travel from the global south to the global north. But the wealth of these resources almost exclusively reaches the global north. It allows people from one side to travel in order to work and learn but restrains people from the other side to do so as well. Ultimately, thoughts, mainly from the global north, are allowed to enter, but there's no reverse flow of ideas. Odongo and I strongly agreed that we have to liquidate that membrane. We have to break through that membrane. So we decided to multiply the connection the two of us have had. We identified people in our network who could also benefit from a cooperation and connected them. We connected Simon Frederick to poets who inspire the world with their literature, Bonnie O'Cori and Cora to medicine students who do research together on how to treat cancer, Miriam and Charles who develop a lemonade together, and 100 individuals more. These connections help us to break through the membrane of global inequality. They transport ideas and create access to other regions of the world. 
I think development aid is not a dead end, but a one-way street. The connections show that cooperation is possible, that there is no civilized versus uncivilized, but instead there is diversity. And the global challenges, our global challenges, climate change, gender inequality, poverty, which are all summarized in the Sustainable Development Goals, count for the whole world equally and can only be solved through cooperation. So the organization Odongo and I founded is called Global. It is a platform that connects ambitious young people from all over the world through digital media and enables them to develop ideas and projects together. We are living in a world where my t-shirt probably traveled more than I did, where ideas could spread within seconds. How is it possible that we are not connected yet. It could be so easy, you just take your phone and text someone. And well, yes, people do have smartphones there. You ask, what is bothering you? How is life there? I found out about a cool scholarship. Why don't you apply as well? Let's break through that membrane. Let's switch track. Let's transform the one-way street. I recommend you to get in touch with someone from another part of the world. Change your perspective. Remember, when I ask you about your dreams in the beginning, maybe your dream will come true. You might fly to Mars one day. And maybe together with someone from Uganda. Thank you. <laughs>